To add something new, other than a theme park review, I had something special planned for Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. My surprise was to treat my viewers to a live stream of my trek through the park as I ventured from maze to maze to give my feedback in real time. We'll do it live! I purchased a mic that arrived just in time for my trip when all of a sudden a mic check revealed. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, the best laid plans. Fuck it. thing sucks. Yeah. Okay, standard editing it is. Halloween Horror Nights 30. As sorry as I am I couldn't make it last year, the fact is no one could since Universal didn't hold their annual event. So, their loss is now your gain, as I get to not only bring special coverage of this Halloween staple, but on this, its 30th edition. Therefore, I bring you my recommendation and reviews for your viewing pleasure. The one word that continued ringing in my mind while navigating the Texas Chainsaw Massacre maze was iconic. That plus... <laughs> It'd be really easy to say that the detail put into the props and sets should be top notch since this theme park is attached to a movie studio, but you really do feel like you're stepping right onto a film set with this one. And my, what sights they have in store. We have such sights to show you. Wrong franchise, yet no less gruesome. Every setting that you step into isn't just another room, but a memorable scene from the film. I'll admit, they got me with the opening scare because my attention was temporarily diverted. Rookie mistake. Regardless, I'm not spoiling anything by stating that they pull every classic scene and setting from the film, recreated in one abridged slaughterhouse. Speaking of the beginning, hearing the radio broadcast from the film of the grisly murders before and while entering the scenes of the crimes sets such a perfect vibe for this house. The sound of that chainsaw never gets old, from rev to rip. It's a reminder of how impactful and exemplary the genre used to be and an indictment of how they don't make films like this anymore. The meat hook section is such a perfect slice of what encapsulates this movie. Get your spot in line and let her rip. Before taking the escalator to the upper level, I noticed a short line for the mummy and decided to give it a ride before heading up. I gotta say, after 22 years, I'm glad this movie's appeal has lasted the test of time. Believe me, there have been plenty of rides and popular films that have been kicked to the curb over the years. The setup, the lighting, the character voiceovers from the movie really make you feel like you're in an Egyptian pyramid and in over your head. So, I'm elated that this attraction dedicated to one of the Universal Classics is still going strong after 4,000 years. You've probably heard my thoughts on this film and franchise in other videos, so I won't belabor the point that this series ain't my cup of tea. However, despite Universal Hollywood paling in comparison to its younger sibling in Orlando in size and scope, one thing that the senior park has over its junior attraction is the tram. As a conveyor car that visits the many sound stages and sets, it allows this maze to shake up the formula from your standard haunted house and the purge is there to capitalize. The opening video that plays on the overhead screens on the tram uses a news broadcast of the annual purge and is played for laughs as it shows the devastation of the blood sport. Noticing the disdain that the political elites share for the common people, I thought comedically set the tone. Just a little bit of art imitating life. 
Once the tram parks, you're on foot and you're on your own. Walking through open areas because now it's open season and you're the prize. You'll make your way through machete-wielding psychos and lunatics with bats in hand, travel agents selling timeshares, but they leave the best for last, the trusty chainsaw. They make good use of other film sets as the mayhem and destruction of the event seamlessly incorporates the War of the Worlds airplane crash landing and the use of the psycho house for a photo op is oddly appropriate. And if you know The Purge, you know they've taken plenty from other films. Okay, I had to get one dig in. One thing I'll commend Universal Studios for is for in-theme park signposts. Believe me, maps are not enough. Considering the evening darkness and dimly lit areas, it is of enormous benefit to your paying customers to have their path directed with these markers. I've walked around aimlessly at other parks trying to find my way. And after Terror Tram, it just so happens that my excursion led me towards the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And that could only mean one thing. Nerds! Also, Butterbeer! Oh, so sweet nectar of the diabetes deities. Why do you hurt so good? Now we move on to Pandora's hop I mean, Curse of Pandora's Box. Considering this was an original maze, unaffiliated with any film, with the exception of maybe Clash of the Titans, I was curious as to what they had in store. Not only was I pleasantly surprised with what they were able to pull off with this attraction, but it was my favorite maze of the park. Usually, I'd be opposed to deafening jump scares, but this house makes good use of it as well as color and lighting. Even though I'm well versed in the Greek myth of Pandora, for some reason Medusa came to mind. Oh, by the way, the Lair of Medusa makes a cameo. Much like how fantasy is filled to the brim with witches and monsters in their legends, its distant cousin, mythology, is also fertile ground for a haunting ground, and this exhibition is ripe for the taking. <laughs> I'm glad she gets her own house, even if she has yet to get her own movie. Always the bridesmaid. As such, I didn't know what to expect from this one, but you can never go wrong with a house based on one of the Universal Monsters. As the intro goes, her story begins where his ends. The Bride's Maze actually has storybook posters to it, which is a minor contribution, but still appreciated for that broken fairy tale feel. As much fun as separate rooms that match a theme can be, I appreciated the chaptered progression. It gives her maze its own story. There is a unique twist in the beginning that I didn't expect, which ties into her gothic roots. I won't spoil it, but... I'll call its welcomed inclusion, addition to detail. By the end, her turn in the mad doctor's lab sees her in control as she now creates life. Evil comes full circle as Monster is now the maker. I was initially weary of such a random sequel's inclusion from this series as a haunted house, assuming past years have adopted parts 1 through 3. My skepticism proves right on the money. I realized they felt they had to throw Michael Myers-related something out there to the masses to build hype for the upcoming Halloween franchise killer, but I almost can't blame the haunted house for how lackluster it is. The fact of the matter is a maze should be as good as the movie, and the fourth entry in the series ain't all that good. The basic format goes room, killer, next room, jump scare, following space, theme song sting, rinse, wash, repetitive. If Halloween was the night he came home, part four isn't anything to write home about. This house stood in complete contrast to the Texas Chainsaw House, and speaking of unremarkable and formulaic... Ah, Walking Dead. 
Despite an apparent fall from grace and ratings decline, those that still do business with this license, whether video game or theme park, still cling to hope of reclaiming past glory. On the subject of former fame, all the greatest hits read also predictable, set pieces are present. Everything you'd expect and have seen before is still hanging around. Hospital scene, prison location, supermarket venue, city under siege. It's all old hat and about as worn thin as the monsters they depict. For the longest time, Walking Dead has been part of the trifecta including The Purge and Stranger Things of maze adaptations that while the hardcore fanbase are sick to death of, mainstream audiences still turn out for, which frankly does nothing to abate my disinterest. I mean, at least The Purge is fun if it isn't scary. <laughs> With the exception of The Exorcist, this was probably the most popular maze. In the interest of time, I initially had to venture off to other parts of the park considering the line was so long for entry, I would have been waiting for 150 minutes just to get in. For context, that would have been one third of the time that Halloween Horror Nights is open, which would have been wasted just waiting online for one maze. So. I'm glad I left this one for the paltry 45 minute wait. Anyway, The House. This is Netflix's other hit horror show next to Stranger Things, so they were definitely going to go all out and all in. The maze is nothing short of atmospheric, and I don't just mean that in an ambiance sense. There are small sections of your pathway where they intentionally crank up the AC to nipple hardening degrees for the sake of force feeding you that chill down your spine. And I've got to admit, the effort is very much appreciated. They do an excellent job of portraying the memorable moments and monsters to make you feel like part of the show. It only makes sense that this was a crowd favorite. You made a haunted house maze out of a haunted house show. And this adaptation knocked it out of the theme park. All in all, the 30th edition of Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood made for a rewarding outing. There were some noteworthy surprises, solid iterations of film and TV, and a decent mix of old and new. You'll note I didn't go into detail on the scare zones, of which there are three. They're nothing special, and a footnote at best. One thing the website sadly doesn't tell you, but yours cruelly will tip you off to, Horror Nights opens at 7, but has early opening in its lower level at 6.15. Therefore, arrive at roughly 5.30, take a ride on Revenge of the Mummy, and get online for Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Exorcist before the tidal wave rushes in. I've been your tour guide incarnate on this trek through the City of Angels, reminding you... I ain't just a big deal, I'm the real deal. Warn your friends, warn everyone.